Well, good afternoon, folks, and welcome back. Cumberland Outdoorsman here with a little bit of a project that has been assigned to me by one of my neighbors and uh, hunting buddies, my friend Randy. And I've been hunting with him for many, many years now. We've been neighbors out here for probably 30 years. And about two months ago, he got a hold of an old muzzle loader, and he gave it to me to make sure that it was uh, functional because he really wanted to try it this season during the muzzleloader deer hunt. And I've got it here. This is an old CVA made in Spain. And we just got some rain here a while ago, so it's really humid out here, folks. And the gun's been inside, so it's sweating right now. It's got water on it, and that's intentional because I'm trying to get the rust off of it. As you can see, there's some surface rust right here on the barrel. There's my AC unit kicking on again. I'm sorry about that, folks, but I've got to keep it going. And uh, Anyway, out here at my shooting bench, it's right <laughs> not too far from my shooting bench, so I, I've got to keep that going to keep the house cool. But anyway, there's some more of the rust, as you can see, right here at the percussion nipple. And it looks like the nipple is pretty much stopped up with rust. So I don't know what's involved here exactly. I don't know if I'll be able to get this gun shooting right away, but we're going to give it a try right now. I brought a nipple wrench here that I made years ago for my Thompson Center Hawking. And it should work right here on this thing. Well, it actually broke loose, believe it or not. See how much rust is in here. Threads are a little bit rusty. I wish I had a new percussion nipple. Whoo, man. That's really rusty, folks. I'm going to have to do some cleanup here. The main thing I want to do is run a patch down through the barrel and see if there's any rust built up in the barrel and it looks like there is judging by what I'm seeing here I don't know if the camera is picking that up or not but there's some rust in the barrel hmm I don't know maybe I can clean that out and get it back to where it's shooting I brought my range rod here this is what I use to clean my muzzle loaders when I'm shooting them I'm not going to use his ramrod right now it needs to be cleaned up as well as you can see it's pretty well corroded so I've got quite a project here but I'm going to try and get it ready for him get it where it's shooting again so that he can take it out this muzzleloader season I'm going to run some steel wool make a few steel wool patches and run them down through the barrel here. I normally don't use modern gun solvents on muzzle loaders, but in this case, I think uh, Hoppy's number nine will be pretty good to saturate the bore with right now, just to break the rust loose. It's what happens when you don't clean your muzzle loader after you get done shooting it because black powder is very corrosive and so is Pyrodex. It's practically identical in terms of its corrosive its corrosiveness on steel. So let me see if I can get get this down through the barrel here. Alright. There's nothing in the barrel. Wow, look at that. <laughs> look at the rust, folks. That's pretty bad. But I see rifling. I see some rifling here. And I'm seeing some rust coming out of the percussion hole there at the bottom. Oh yeah, 
There you can see it's clear. I feel the rifling grabbing the patch that I made, so I think I'm going to be in good shape in terms of getting it clean. I'm just going to really have to work at it here. I may pick up another nipple here, but uh, for right now I'm going to soak it. I've got a little bit of hoppies left here, and I'm going to soak it for a while, see if I can get it cleared up. Enough to where we can get a spark into the barrel, get this gun shooting again, get it back in the woods and get it in action. <clears throat> I'll make another patch out of steel wool here and run another one down through there. Man, I'm going to have to really clean this range rod when I get done here. That is nasty. Now, let me see if I can get this other patch started here. It's starting to clean up. It's not too bad. It don't feel as rough as I thought it would be. It's starting to lighten up a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and take the lock out and take every uh, metal part off of this gun stock. I'm not going to refinish the gun stock. I'm just going to brighten the brass up a little bit. Maybe clean up this patch box. I haven't even looked in the patch box. Let's see what we got in here. Hey, there's some patches in there. <laughs> I'll brighten up the brass and uh, get all the rust cleaned off and get it ready to shoot again. Sometimes these old guns just need a little TLC. Rust is a gun's biggest enemy, folks. When you get done with your muzzle loader for the season or you get done shooting it, make sure you clean it real well. You know, get all the powder fouling and lead fouling out of the barrel and off the gun because it's going to rust on you. Moisture is a constant in any environment, you know. The air that you breathe has moisture in it and that's what's getting on your gun and if there's any black powder residue on that steel and it's unprotected trust me it's going to rust I've seen it time and again you've got to take care of this equipment if you want to use it in the future and if you wait too long a lot of times these guns are no good anymore you know I think we're going to be in good shape with this one though judging by the way it feels when I push this ramrod down into the barrel because as you can see it's it's spinning the handle on my range rod here and it feels relatively smooth I feel a little bit of roughness right there but further down the barrel not too bad not too bad at all. So I'm going to let that sit for a while and let it soak in good and then I'll be back with you. Well folks I was intending on doing most of this video outside but it started raining again so I brought the old gun in and I'm going to go ahead and disassemble the barrel from the stock and get the lock out of it and clean it up. I went ahead and knocked the uh, barrel wedge out of the stock so now I can remove the barrel got the hammer cocked back and not really sure what I'm gonna find here as expected there's gonna be some rust right here but you know other than that the barrels in pretty good shape underneath I thought this would all be rusted up but it's not so I'll go ahead and take the lock out now the only thing that holds it in are these 
two screws here on the side. I call it the lock, but it's some people call it the side plate. Whatever. I'm going to remove these screws if I can, if they're not rusted in there. There it is, folks. It's going to need a little cleaning up. The wood is in pretty good shape, though. Actually, it's in real good shape. I'm not going to refinish this stock because it's really not necessary. Just needs a good wiping down, really. I may go over it with some stock sheen or something like that, you know. But for now, I'm just going to leave it. Leave it pretty much the way it is. Like I said, I'll clean up some of the brass a little bit and uh, kind of restore it. The breech plug is in surprisingly good condition. I thought all that would be really rusted up, but it's not. Mostly the problem is with the barrel, you know. Set that out of the way. I'll get these metal parts cleaned up. I think what happened is someone was out shooting it and they just kind of halfway cleaned it up a little bit and set it over in a corner somewhere. And pretty much ignored the old gun. My brother once had a CVA muzzle loader, 50 caliber, and uh, he took several deer with his. It was a really good shooting gun. I mean, very, very accurate. This is also a 50 caliber, by the way. It's a shame, you know, because they had a pretty good bluing job on this gun. I'm going to try and get as much of that off as I can, so I'm going to fix to use some elbow grease on this barrel and try to restore it as much as I possibly can. So I'll be back with you. Well folks, now I've got the barrel taken off of the stock and uh, I removed the ramrod mount and got it cleaned up. And I've been sitting here working on some of this brass hardware. And as you can see, it's starting to come around. It's cleaning up real nicely. I'm not going to go too crazy and get it just super glossy, but I wanted to get that brown tarnish off of it. And I've got it all pretty well done. And the way to get these screws, these brass screws clean, let me show you how I do that real quick. I'll zoom in. I just put them in a drill like this right here, you know. I'll take some 600 grit. And that cleans them up. Real quick and simple. Gives them a nice polished look. That's the quickest way I know to clean up these brass screws. And that really takes them and makes them shine, as you can see. That's one that's been done, and this one here has not. I'll get all these done and reassemble the gun. And then we'll take it out and we'll shoot it. So I'll be back with you then. Well folks, here I am back two days later 
and uh, the rain finally stopped. But I'm out here with this gun, this old muzzle loader, CVA, and I cleaned it up. I'll give you a little close up here. As you can see, the brass cleaned up real well, and I cleaned up the stock. I didn't refinish it, I just cleaned it up. And uh, the barrel all looks pretty good. I got the bore scrubbed out pretty good, I think. And uh, sometimes, you know, you just got to get out and shoot these things. I went ahead and cleaned the nipple here, the percussion nipple. And I think I got everything working the way it should. Uh, it's got a double set trigger. You set it with the rear trigger here and then squeeze the front trigger and the gun fires. Half cock is your safety. And as you can see, the gun will not fire in the half cock position. So let me go ahead and get loaded up here. We're going to shoot some uh, Hornady ball loads first. Uh, these are 180 grain, just round balls. As you can see here, and I'm using some pre lube patches to help clean that barrel up even more. It looks pretty good. I can see rifling in there and I shine down in there with my flashlight. It doesn't look as bad as I thought it was going to be. So, you know, hopefully I got my fingers crossed. Hopefully it's going to work out just fine. First, I'm going to pop a percussion cap in there and see if the gun will actually fire. Sounded pretty good, folks. All right. Now I've got some black powder here in this flask, real genuine black powder. And I've got some Pyrodex RS FFG equivalent. But uh, we're going to load a little bit of black powder first. And I'm just going to go with a real mild load. We're going to go with uh, 70 grains of black, first of all. So let me use my powder measure here. And i got to be a little bit sparing with this black powder because I don't know if you all have heard there is no black powder being produced commercially currently here in the United States, so I got to be real sparing with that. I'm not sure if you can still order black powder. I believe there's still some being produced in Switzerland, overseas. But I'm not sure about that. I haven't looked for any lately. I just know I have some on hand and I like to use it for the uh, muzzleloader hunting season. Alright, let me go ahead and get one of these started here. I'll show you how I do that. There you can see I got the uh, ball started on the patch and use a ball starter like this here. Make sure that's seated all the way down, just like I told you before in the other muzzleloader videos. And uh, of course, we didn't have any source of ignition at all until I get ready to shoot. So let's give it a try. I'm going to shoot at that plate down there at 50 yards. See if I can hit that from here. And I'm going to see if this gun will actually go off. <laughs> so 
here we go. Well, she fired, folks. That's a good sign. And you can see the smoke coming out of the percussion nipple there. I'm going to go down there and look at that plate just to see if it was hit. But first, I'm going to run a patch down through the barrel. Like I said, sometimes just getting out here and shooting these old guns after they've been sitting for a long time is the best thing you can do for them. <clears throat> I'm going to run a wet patch and then a dry patch. I'm going to be shooting some Hornady Great Plains bullets as well. These are what I use a full house load behind in my muzzle loader. And I believe that's what my buddy Randy, I think that's what he'll be using as well. That's a really good performing bullet on white-tailed deer. Okay, guys, looks like I did hit that plate. Um, I'm going to go ahead and load up another ball here. And uh, this time we're going to shoot it with the uh, Pyrodex. You know, when you get out here and you shoot these old muzzle loaders, you really kind of need to use a little bit extra caution because uh, you know you're dealing with loose powder and primers and a lot of this stuff can catch on fire before you know it. So let me go ahead and load up another one here. Get this ball started. I always try to get it as close to the center of the patch as I possibly can. Okay, I got some steel targets down there. I've got a wild boar, a grizzly bear, a buffalo, and a sasquatch. <laughs> I had to remove my rimfire targets because I don't want to shoot them with this thing. It would just destroy my rimfire targets. But those other targets are made out of half inch thick steel. And uh, that's what I'm going to aim at. I'm not sure how close this gun's hitting. He's going to have to sight this gun in for himself. I'm just doing this to try to get it close, so. Let me get, get on that Sasquatch there. He's sneaking out of the side of the bushes there, taking a peek. We're gonna see if we can't drop him right there. A little bit of a hang fire there, but I think I hit him. He's not standing up anymore. All right. I don't know if you heard it or not, but had kind of a kapow. When that gun went off. <laughs> anyway, it did fire. Just a slight hesitation there. All right, I'm gonna pop another cap through there. There might be some moisture in there causing that. see if that makes a difference and it could be because of that pyrodex I don't know I tend to find that the uh, black powder will last longer and it'll be more volatile than pyrodex that's why I like to use it I, I just 
I think it's more dependable, you know. The genuine article usually is. So let's give this a try. a good tight fitting patch there so let's try out the wild boar next see if I can hit that Well, no hesitation that time. And it looks like I made a good hit because I knocked it down. Well, we got the Sasquatch right there at the base of the neck. And got the wild boar right there at the shoulder. That's a pretty good hit right there. Okay, now I got this CVA charge back up. I'm getting ready to take another shot. This time, I'm gonna try for that buffalo down there at 50 yards. So let me go ahead and put a percussion cap on here and give it a try. Shoot this one offhand as well. Here we go. That's the thing about shooting black powder, you gotta wait for the smoke to clear to see if you hit anything. I don't see it standing anymore, it looks like I made a hit. Well now that I got the gun back together, got it shooting and everything, let's give Randy a call and tell him his gun is ready. If he'll answer the phone. He just lives down the street here, so he may have heard the shots. <laughs> I don't know if he's home or not. Your call has been forwarded to an automatic voice message system. Let me try that one more time. Sometimes he'll pick up the phone after it rings twice. Hello. Randy. Yeah. Hey, this is Tom. Yeah. Hey, I got your gun ready if you want to come pick it up. Which one? The old muzzle loader? Yeah. Oh, you got it all cleaned up? Did you hear me shoot? No, I didn't hear you shoot it. Did you shoot it? Yeah, I've shot it oh, four or five times already. Oh, yeah, and it worked? Oh, yeah. All right. I'm, I, I'm coming from town right now, so I'll stop oh. by your house. Okay, well, I'll... Uh, now, what do you shoot it with? Uh, uh, just pellets or just regular powder? You pouring in powder? and Yeah, pouring in powder. That's what you need to use is pouring in powder. You using what number nine primers or whatever they are? Number eleven percussion caps. Yeah, and then you're using uh, uh, cap and uh, ball or what are you doing? Yeah, yeah, it's uh, using a uh, patch and ball. That's correct. 
I'm going back to old school. Well, now you can use these conical bullets. I'm getting ready to shoot a full house uh, Great Plains bullet through it and see how it does. And, oh, yeah? And uh, I think it's pretty well on. So, so is it shooting pretty good? Shooting pretty good. Is it? Yep. Well, not bad for a free muzzle loader. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> okay. Anyway. That guy that gave it to me said, hell, it's been hanging over the fireplace for 20 years. Yeah, I hear you. Well, and, uh, I'll be out here in the back, so. Oh, it'll be 15 minutes or so before I get there. Okay, I'll see you in a little well, while. I'll talk to you later. Bye. All right, bye-bye. Well, I'm sure he's going to be very well pleased with this old gun. Now that we got it shooting again, got it cleaned up and everything, I think he's going to take it out in the woods and try to harvest a whitetail with it this year. I want to try one of these Great Plains bullets, and I'm going to be shooting at water jugs again. Now, let me go fill up some water jugs, and we'll take a shot at that out here at 50 yards and see what one of these Great Plains bullets will do out of this CVA muzzleloader. I'll be right back with you folks. Okay folks, I went ahead and set up some water jugs, one gallon water jugs, and just like with my Thompson Center uh, Hawken rifle and Renegade, I'm going to shoot 90 grains of powder pushing one of these Hornady 385 grain bullets. That should give me around 1,500 feet per second or so, which would be more than enough to smack down any whitetail. I picked up this little powder measure last year, and boy, I, I really like this. This is great. I mean, probably the best one I've ever used. <clears throat> Get it all in there. Get it tamped down into the flash hole. And now we'll take out one of these chunks of lead here. I like the way they got these packaged. There it is, folks. 385 grain hollow point. Great Plains bullet. You don't use a patch to start these, you just give these a good push. And what I use, what I like to use anyway, to get them started, you have to go past the uh, bearing band on the front to get them down in the barrel, get them into the rifling. I made me a leather patch out of three pieces of leather that are glued together with hide glue and I lay it right here on my barrel or on my bullet actually at the muzzle and that cushions your hand that way you can get it pushed down in there and get it started just like that now it's just a matter of driving it home I have no idea where this bullet's going to hit, but judging by how well those round balls flew, I think we should be pretty well on the money. Here comes Randy now. Let me let me get him around here, and I want to capture his reaction on camera. There's your gun. That thing looks a hundred percent different. <laughs> it did. Cleaned the brass up and the stock. I didn't refinish the stock. I just cleaned it up real good. I got some Holy man. Uh, stuff in there for gun the stock. The man that know. gave it to me had it above his mantle up on his wall. And he said it, he never shot it because it was plugged up when he got it. And it's been hanging on that wall for over 20 years. Wow. And never been messed with. So you shot it for the first time and probably... 30, 25, 30 years. You should see the rust that I got out of it, though. No, I wouldn't it, doubt it. I mean, it was full of rust. Well, the nipple... It was, was stopped up. Yeah. yeah, it was solid. I tried to find one today, right. and 
I guess you're gonna have to order one or whatever, but this one here's working great. Well, that's fine. You know, but I mean, it, it's always. I just good. wanna, I wanna go back to old school because I I shoot that Optima 209 Pro. Right. And I mean, it's it's the same as a rifle. These here do just fine. Let me tell you. Yeah, that's. Uh, I, I shot one of them many years ago. I was with you on a hunt, remember? Yeah. Where you shot a big doe and, yeah. and harvested. Oh, yeah, yeah. So there. that's one of them where you got a 50-50 chance if it's going to go off. <laughs> this one will go off. Trust me. So let's take a quick shot here at 50 yards. Hopefully, I can hit that. I'm not sure where it's going to hit. I'll get it zoomed in here. I hit those steel targets down there. You shooting at that white thing? Yeah, the white jugs there. So here we go. Woo. Did I miss? I don't know, I seen something fall over out there. I think I missed it. All right, we got her loaded up. And we'll give it another try here. I think I hit a little bit high on that first shot. Yeah, that's what I thought. You hit high. I heard something hit that time. And once the smoke clears, <laughs> you see whether you got a deer or not. Yep, let's go check it out. Oh, you blew the heck out of it. Yeah. I heard it hit. I heard the punch. Let's go down here and take a look. I haven't sighted this gun at all. I think it's pretty well on. Oh, so you're just shooting off I whatever just, was on it. I'm just shooting it just the way it was. Oh yeah, you blew it on the thing. I shot a little bit high on that, that first shot. and I think I just pulled up a little bit. Oh yeah. Ooh, man, look at look at what it did to that jug. I mean, it demolished it. Holy man. Yeah. It demolished it. <laughs> yeah. Look where I hit that buffalo a while ago. Oh, yeah. Perfect, perfect shot. Perfect. If it was a real buffalo, we'd be gutting it right now. Yep, there's your bullet. Look at that. Perfect mushroom. Look at that. Talk about putting a hurting on something. Looks like a nail head. Yeah. That's gorgeous right there. That's a perfect mushroom. Yeah, that is. That's what you want. You put that through a deer, you'll definitely have a good blood trail. Let's see. Yeah. Went through all them jugs, expended all its energy on them jugs right there. This thing retained every single bit of its weight. Yep. There's still, still 300 grains of, of, yeah, knockdown power right there. Yep. That's the back end of it. Yep. That's the front end of it. You can see the where the rifling cut into the lead. Yeah. See how yep. that barrel's in good shape still. Yeah. It had it spinning. Yep. You couldn't ask for a better. No. That's that's perfect. You get a deer with that, he's he's a goner. <laughs> well, are you happy with that? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's perfect. Okay, folks. Now we got Randy trying out his own gun here. <laughs> Gonna give it a shot here. All right. Let's try this. I just shot me a Sasquatch. You hit the Sasquatch. <laughs> Let's go see that where you hit him. Good. Yes, it does. Really good. Well, you knocked him down. I heard the bullet hit the steel over here. I don't shoot much farther than that anyway. Yeah. No, I'm not going to take any long shots. Well, out to 50 yards, you, yeah. you know, he's going to be pretty good. Yeah, you hit him right next to where I hit my, where I hit. 
right there. Yep. A little bit high, a little bit bright. Yep. I'll play with it and get it all tuned in. Oh yeah. Already. Well, thank you, Tom. You're quite welcome. That will. Like I said, that's the first time that thing's seen a bullet go down the barrel in probably 30 years. Well, hopefully it'll see another one. Oh, see guide one, one here in October. Guide one towards a whitetail. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. So you're really going to try it out, huh? For yeah, I'm going to use this on opening morning a muzzleloader. Okay. I'm going to leave my Optima 209 Pro at home. And, and shoot that. And shoot this. Yep. If so. But I mean, I shot one of them for many a year. How many deer have you killed with the that traditional one you had before? Probably eight to ten. Eight to ten deer. Yeah. yeah. But I remember one time, the other one I had was longer. Remember? Yeah. I, I don't. And remember. I was holding that thing on a deer one time, and the barrel was so heavy. I mean, and he would not turn. He just stood there and looked at me straight on. And finally, I just got to where I couldn't hold it no more, bobbing up and down. Yeah. And I lowered that gun down the way he went. It was his luck. Just lay, just lay it up there because I got to clean it anyway. All right, all right. I got to get done. Thank you, Tom. You're welcome. <laughs> well, folks, I'm going to go ahead and close out this video and give you one more story before I go. But um, I hope you enjoyed watching this video and my friend Randy coming over and shooting this old gun for the first time now that I got it cleaned up for him. I feel like I've accomplished a mission by doing that because he assigned it to me and trusted me enough you know, to get it ready for him for the upcoming muzzleloader season. Sometimes when you get these old guns cleaned up, the best thing you can do is just get them out and shoot them and clean the barrels out, shoot them again, clean them and shoot them. You know, it's, that repetitive loading and shooting that really gets the barrels back in shape and gets them seasoned in and ready for the upcoming deer season or whatever it is you like to hunt. Uh, but anyway, back to the story. My brother once had a CVA. It wasn't exactly like this one. It was a more of a plain model. And I restored it for him as well. And once I got it done, we went on to a public hunting area for a, a deer hunt, it was later in the winter time. And we got out there early in the morning and we passed by this big oak tree that was right out in the middle of a field. And there was a creek that went alongside this field with some woods along that creek. And uh, he climbed up in that tree and I handed his gun up to him and I went on, went towards the creek further down. And as the day, started to light up the sun was starting to come out i heard some quail whistling in the distance and then all of a sudden i heard a boom <laughs> well it was my brother he just shot and uh, i sat there and sat there and i heard something crashing I, I didn't know what it was i thought he'd fallen out of the tree or something anyway i went up there i couldn't stand it any longer i went up there to my brother and he was standing on a limb right there in that old oak tree with a big grin on his face and uh, he said, man, I just got one. I said, well, I heard you shoot. It didn't take long, did it? So he got down out of the tree and, and then we found the blood trail and followed the blood trail to that deer and he was laying right in the creek. That's the crashing noise that I heard and it was a beautiful eight point. And that's one of those memories that will stay with me forever. You know, that was just a great morning. So anyway, I always like to add a little bit of entertainment with these videos when I share them with you, and that's what I wanted to share with you is one of my stories. Um, so, you know, if you have an old muzzle loader and it's been sitting around for a long time, or if you acquire one of these old antiques like this, well, they're considered antiques now. They're just an old vintage muzzle loader rifle that uh, came about during the time when muzzle loaders were making a comeback. You know, black powder shooting was making a comeback. That's where this gun was from some 30 odd years ago. But uh, if you have one sitting around, you know, get it out and clean it up 
and take it out and shoot it, you know, and, and you might surprise yourself how well the old guns can still shoot. And it's just a, a good feeling if you can take it out in the woods and harvest a deer with it. I mean, it really gives you a sense of accomplishment, folks. And, you know, I, I own them too. I have inlines, and that's the way a lot of people muzzleloader hunt anymore, but there's still a lot of us that like to shoot these old charcoal burners, and we're successful with them. You know, and I think you saw that in the past videos that I have posted where I've taken you on some deer hunts with my old muzzle loaders and harvested some fine deer with them. So with that being said, let me leave you with another thought. If you like to go hunting, fishing, camping, shooting, hiking, whatever it may be, I hope you enjoy it as much as I do. And also remember, hit that like button, smash the bell icon, and subscribe. That way you'll know when more videos like this will be coming your way. I'll see you next time, folks.